Morning everyone. Today we have something very special for you. A package arrived from Espen Lee. Now of course you don't know Espen, but I know it in between. He sent me an email and said, listen, I'm developing a survival book. And when I finish the prototype, I would like to send it to you so you can test it and tell me what you think of it. I'm all yours. Very interesting, he put a lot of thought in it and a lot of development. Bubble wrap, big bubbles, okay. Didn't see that one coming. And now we see what we get. So what you see today is a pre-version, a prototype. And when it's working and when the interest is here, Aspen Lee will start a Kickstarter crowdfunding campaign and then go a bit more big scale. So this is what you get. It's what you get. I need to, it's, it's well packed. I have to admit. Aspen, it's well packed. One thing directly, Aspen, if you want to sell this, maybe include some kind of shoulder bag. Because not everybody will throw it in his backpack or something, so find a solution. Small shoulder bag, maybe, maybe fit the arrows into. Would be already nice. It's really well packed. So. These parts are still 3D printed and in blue because I live in Malta and he said we have to see around it, so he made them blue. But of course, later on it will be machined. Well, it looks very interesting. And we get a lot of things, so we have a lot to cut. Now the small bits and pieces come out here. So, first time set up, you need to make sure that you don't lose or miss anything. So this is how the bow is packed. This is the riser and here you can put the limbs in so you can store it like this and it's really rugged, really cool. So I like this one. There's nothing moving so this one you throw in your backpack and you're good to go. But we are not here for throwing it in the backpack. The string. The handle is powder cord so just in case you need powder cord you have it. So now let's see how this works. Of course there is no description. So I have to figure out by myself how it works. So this is the handle now, an arrow rest here. But he will build a version with two arrow rests. This is called the Reaper X and the other one will be then only the Reaper. Cool. And then we have here some flaps. So, so far. Handle is quite massive. So, what else do we get? We get a bow quiver, so to say. These are arrow holders. Mm -hmm. You know, so look at this. And look at this. So, now you have your arrows on. That's cool. Oh, wait a second. The limbs go in here. Now I found it. Okay. The other one will in storage. So here, when you put the limbs in, and this part, then this screw is stopping them. See, I knew it that it's a better engineer than I thought. Really, really cool. So what else do we get? Not done yet. That's cool. So, you get a lamp. And this lamp can be mounted, let me see. Should be mounted here then, I guess. So, look at this. Now we are prepping, or up there. I think it depends what you want. Down there, up there, so you have a lamp with you, a light, so you always see something. What's going on? And then we have here some flaps. 
And in this flaps, you will find something more. We are not done. So here we have a lot of things to come. Look at this. We have two wires, you know, two cables where you can make some rings for something, connect something to something. And well, we don't know. I think so. And this is, I guess, let me see. This is a small match. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, is that cool? That's cool. So you have a small lighter and these two wires we put back. <laughs> so cool. So you have everything for your outdoor adventure. You get the point. So, and we have another flap there. And what do we get here? I think that's all now. Hope so. What else do we get? Look what you get. A foldable knife, multi-tool with a can opener, with some hex screw mounts here. Awesome. Isn't it awesome? And you fit it here. Very close it. So this one, you need to find a solution that it doesn't rattle. Back to the bow. Bow length is 58 and a half from nook to nook. Cool. So another knife is rattling. 58 and a half. So the string has a knocking point. Cool, it's so cool. So it's the first survival horse bow takedown ever built with a modern riser. It's so cool. Let's see how easy the bow is to string. Oh, that was easy. Okay, that was easy. So we have here a groove. In the sea is where the string runs. Look at this. <laughs> nice. Cool. Brace height. Brace height looks like seven inches. And the weight of the bow, because we want to know that all. 1.2 kilos. But you have a lot of here aluminium riser and a lot of plastic and a lot of stuff. So 1.2 kilos. So now. Put the arrows back. It's nice made. But of course with this arrow quiver you can only fit these standard carbon arrows. But look at this. So cool. This flap isn't... Oh, I forgot one feature. I need to show you now. On top of this flap, once I manage to get these metal thingies in, It's so cool. So, everything you want. Solid. The handle is very solid. Let's see. Is it straight? Yeah, almost. Doesn't get straighter than that, I guess. Huh? So. Yes, it does easy 28. It does even maybe 30. Oh, thank you for the arrows now. So we have here this small Olympic kind of arrow rest. Let's see. Ooh, yeah, okay. So this vibration here, you need to make sure that everything is here stored properly. So we need to work on the noise cancellation. The arrow quiver is too loud. So if you are out and about and you want to survive, noise is one thing you don't want to have. See this one here, too loud. So there we need to find a dampened solution, maybe with rubber inlays, not plastic on carbon rattles too much. For the rest. Works pretty well. Ignore the black blob in the background is our range bunny. So one thing has been the arrow quiver needs to be more silent. But 
for all the rest, look. Yeah, it's a bit too noisy. Let's put the arrows away and see if it's better. And these lids need to have some magnet or something. Better don't rattle because you want to be silent. But for the rest, has a little vibration. But it's a survival part, so they have these all these mechanical parts, they rattle a bit. And now it's the light the witch rattles, so we need to put all these things away and then it kind of then you don't hear anything anymore pretty cool so bunny is sleeping again and then you have here your lights just in case it's dark you turn this on and you see wherever you go if you need some help and you have down there a light you see then even if you do something have to fiddle here something you can see it even in the dark. Very cool, very cool. Let's shoot one more time. I think the knocking point is a little low for my taste. I would make it a little higher. Yo, look at this. Now we like each other. See, knocking point a little higher. Center shoot. Means a kill. A carrot. A very precise weapon so with this one maybe you add some fur boys here to make it even more silent and then here maybe some felt thingy because here you hear it a little you have vibration but here a little felt that it stops the vibration of the string the oscillation then you get your bow more silent for the first iteration I would say well done. So let's see what it says. At 28. Let's see if we can balance this out some kind of. And work. Look at this. So at 28. 41.5. Enough for a small game. So for survival purpose. Let's see how it looks like at 28. So this bow does easy more. We have here some, I don't know what it is, fiberglass, I guess, limbs. Then the 3D printed sears, and you see string angle still no problem. Not even 60 degrees. He put some knots in the string, so most probably this is a pre. But they're in the same place. I don't know. Little bit shall we draw it? 30. Mm -hmm. Let's see if you could answer. So 30 inches, see? Still not a big deal. Here is now a little on this plastic, a little pressure, I guess. But if this is crafted out of a sturdy material, works. Now we have string angle 60 degrees at 30. Nice. So you have a little vibration, but it's not a tournament bow, it's a survival bow. And for this, you have a knife, you have a compass, you have a lighter, you have these small cables to tie something. So this is simply aluminum. That's pretty cool. These things need to be held with a magnet that they don't rattle or something. Look at this, huh? Let's see, it's a little wide here, but with the survival pose we have this sometimes. There's a groove for the string, so the string runs nice in there. Make a felt stopper here, then the string vibration will be less. Transition, nice mate here. Then I guess this is fiberglass or hmm? ends in here. But it ends in the plastic, not in the aluminum. So the aluminum rises this one piece here. It's not bad. So this idea I like a lot. Well done, you have this arrow quiver, this one I said, there needs to be something with rubber or something that they don't rattle or take, you know, this, this foam or something that they don't rattle when you shoot because this is you make the first shot and all your prey will run away. So 
but for the rest feels quite balanced nice and the bow feels rugged so this is not something that you will think oh we need to take care that i don't destroy it let's see what it does on 20 meters huh? Went a little to the right. Ah, it's a center shot, bro. Need to compensate for that. Ah, still to the right. Because you shoot completely through the center. So I wish then I would like to have this one with two arrow uh, rests. Not used to shoot the center shot, bro, anymore. But even 20 meters, no problemo. I think um, this arrow rest doesn't make sense for a survival bow. Because it's too, too flimsy, it can break and when it breaks you can't shoot anymore, so... Do like with a traditional bow make an arrow shelf. Like you have down there almost already. Let's see, you have there almost an arrow shelf, make it slightly rounded. A little higher maybe, that you have your height again. And then make it on both sides. Would be my suggestion because then a right-handed archer and a left-handed archer can shoot it or you can shoot three fingers or some release you know just in case in the survival situation you hurt your fingers you can't use this one shoot some release or whatever you know more versatile the twin bow with two shelves and not this this thing is for my taste a little too modern should not be on a survival bow so and then you are done you want to string your bow as you usually do Zack, zack. Easy peasy. And then you simply grab the limbs. Look at this. It's pretty. I did the wrong one first. That's me. Right. Zack. Zack. It's set up and broken down in seconds. And of course, if you want, you can remove your arrow quiver. But this one is not too heavy, it fits in a backpack or in a small shoulder bag, something doesn't affect you that much. Pretty cool. So I like this idea, Espen. I like where you want to go. As I said, I gave you a few of my suggestions. This lid should not move on its own, it needs to be locked with a small magnet. The parts inside need to be held down with a magnet or something, or the inside needs to be covered with some felt or something that it doesn't rattle because you don't want to have noise when you shoot. Arrow quiver is set with an inlay or make this part out of foam. 3D printed is too stiff, it rattles because the arrows are this too noisy. And for the rest, I would say pretty cool and i said of course for me this arrow rest is not going to work so make a twin bow we have two arrow rests on both sides some kind of but you get there and for the rest and the price if i'm not mistaken of this bow with all these parts included will be something around 100 us dollars and i think it's interesting so you have a more than 40 pound bow takedown which does 30 inches does the job works has a little vibration but has a lot of potential so i would say aspen go for it it's a great idea because the other survival bars are these foldable ones and yeah what you get and you have nothing else on it here you have a lot of things included you have paracord included a set a small knife multi-tool you have a compass even if it's small but it shows you the turn. And it works. Yeah. From this south. Yeah, it works. So compass works. And you have all these nice little things with it, so it's pretty cool. So Aspen. <clears throat> I feel very honored that you thought about me testing your prototype. Um, thank you very much for that. It's a really interesting piece. It needs a few more tweaks, but then it's ready to go, I guess. And I really think it has a place in the archery world so for some preppers it's nothing you want to go on a 3d tournament or something on the other side you most probably should be capable but this is really for you go out in out in the woods you know the survival techniques they are coming more and more so with this arrow quiver you find a better solution and then this bow is really really good i like it a lot i don't do speed test this bow has 
160, 170 foot per second depends which arrows you shoot, but I would suggest that you shoot a little heavy arrows, then you have a broadhead on it, so it's not the fastest, but it's enough for small game hunting for sure. So even maybe you can have small whatever deer or something, but for, for a rabbit or for something like this, it's fully enough and you hunt distance 15, 20 meters maybe. So for this one, does the job perfectly. And just in case the zombies are coming, this one works too. So zombie apocalypse, there we go. And then of course we take different colors, more blackish and not shiny parts here because we want to be undercover, right? But for a pre-production model, I'm very impressed. Again, thank you Espen for sending it to me and thank you all for watching, subscribing, sharing and all this stuff. I catch you in the next one.